So exercise can actually be really sleep promoting because it can tire you. And if you do it earlier in the day, so if you do it more than a couple hours before falling asleep, what you do is you get this effect where your body temperature is raised and then it cools, which primes you to fall asleep. Another example of something that can be done actually really quickly before going to sleep is taking a shower because you're raising your body temperature and then as the showers dry off, it cools down. So you're basically mimicking that effect of raising your body temperature and cooling it down in private university. So kind of one of the things that I mentioned before about just changing the habit is if, there's, if you're doing something that isn't helping you get to your goal, find some sort of substitute that will, that kind of has that same effect, right? So if you're on your phone because you find it really relaxing to talk with friends, for example, or it's really interesting, you could substitute that with something like reading a book or listening to music that you like or stretching, for example, and then just taking whatever you were doing right before you fall asleep and then do that just at an early point of the day so it doesn't Does that make sense? So this is kind of the other part is people generally, if I ask people that are runners here, what are some of the favorite places you like to run? Or exercise? Okay, hold up, shady places? Where else? Any kind of locations? Gym? Okay. I'm sorry? What was it? Okay. So one of the things is like people tend to go and do things like that they actually enjoy. So one of the easiest ways to get a better night's sleep is to actually make your environment something that you would look forward to sleeping in. So that first thing that you all kind of touched on about just making it a little bit cooler. So if like with your roommate there, you can come to some sort of Moving on what the temperature should be. Having blackout curtains so the light's not interfering with your ability to sleep. If noise can be an issue. Oh, okay. I'm sorry for writing over here. Um, there's just an example, real quick, of what the room is. You guys, you guys know this. I did it on before, but students that sleep well tend to get better grades. The last thing I'll just mention for food real quick, as I mentioned, there's a few foods that can actually help you sleep better. Um, they're listed right there because either affects melatonin or the issue with tryptophan is you all ever hear like the piece on if you eat turkey it helps you fall asleep. That's not a hundred percent true. Actually what it is the combination of carbohydrates, which affects something called serotonin, and that makes the tryptophan available. So if you are getting meat, Try to do it a couple hours before one. Yeah. Sorry, um, I'm not sure if this is going to sound weird, but like going back to what you said about the body temperature, like I've heard a lot of things. I guess it's just within girls that like you can't sleep with your hair wet. Like, is that true? So. <laughs> so let me get to let me get to two points there. I'll get to uh, I'll get to two things for that. So, you, one is, can you and two, is it a good idea? So, can you fall asleep with wet hair? Yes. Is it good for you? The kind of the issue is almost like a skin piece because if you have that moisture right against your face, like with on the pillow, one that can be uncomfortable, and two, it can kind of lead to some skin conditions as well, especially like the home trap, the dirt that may be on your pillow on there. So it's generally, and people find themselves too generally more comfortable just being dry. Um, just like you would have, like it would be weird, right, if your pillow was wet, like you wouldn't find that comfortable. So it's more on like comfort level and kind of skin shape. And so guys, thank you so much, sorry. For
to not get in the bag.